us, we're starting our show off with some sounds that you're not used to with DSU Inside Perspective, huh? Yeah, I'm Carlos Holmes, and this is indeed DSU Inside Perspective, and we welcome you. Uh, this is the show where we talk with uh, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and guests about some of the things that are going on in the world, or some of the great things that are going on here at Delaware State University. And today, we have some great stuff going on because we have bassist Roberto Valle here to share with our students some of his musical wisdom. And we're going to learn about who Roberto Valle is here. Uh, he's doing a series of workshops, sessions, and he's even going to do an informal concert mm -hmm. tonight. And mm -hmm. So, so we're, we're looking for a full day with him. And uh, welcome. Welcome to Thanks, Delaware man. State University. Thanks for having me. Appreciate uh, we it. We really appreciate it when we can bring somebody of your caliber and expose our students to them. Let's start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, how were you exposed to music? You're from New York City, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Brooklyn? Yeah, Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Yeah. Now, how, were, how, did you, you know, how did you become attracted to music as something you thought you might yeah. want to do? Well, listening to my, uh, my parents' music, mm -hmm. and, and my father had these, um, some contemporary, like Italian uh, pop music at the time, this folk music and, and the, uh, the operas, Puccini, Verdi, and I didn't know, it, for me it was just music, it was just the sound coming out of these speakers, mm -hmm. and, and I listened to it, and he, he one time he, he, leave, he, he left for work to open up his jewelry store, and he came back, and I guess I jumped about three feet in the air because I wasn't supposed to like go to the Victrola, but I would mm -hmm. put on music every morning. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was the early, the early music was, I guess, classical, mm -hmm. and uh, it was my parents who bought me, when I was about five or six, uh, some Beatle, uh, uh, Beatle uh, records and Elvis Presley because my father, I remember him saying, yeah, my son, he's living in America, and he, all he's listening to is Verdi. So I started uh, listening to the Beatles, and wow, pop music. Um, they're talking about love, but they're not talking about, you know, love, mama, mama and, bo and boys love. They're talking like, like grown-up love, like listening to the lyrics. So. Um, I guess it was you know those those early years, and I, I picked up a, a folk guitar, and my parents gave me a piano lessons. So. But how did you get attracted to the bass? Okay, uh, I was leading up to that. Well, I guess in in the third grade, in my public school, they took a, uh, a, a an ear comprehension uh, test for mm -hmm. the whole third grade. I didn't realize what it was for, because it was a brand new grade school, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> they chose out of a hundred and something kids they chose the for the fourth grade class to <clears throat> have a music class mm -hmm. so everybody that scored high and i guess i scored like perfect they told my parents uh, we'd like to get your son you know in the orchestra and the very first day of the orchestra class the following year uh i was all excited to be in in, in this classroom with all these instruments and the teacher asked me, well, what, what do you want to play? You're kind of tall. And I, and I saw those row of string basses against the wall, <laughs> just pointed to that. And he, and he, he saw my enthusiasm and he said, you, you, uh, you want to play that? Okay, come up, come up in front of the classroom. And he put an acoustic bass in my hands. Just, you know, just like the, the picture of that one over there. Mm -hmm. I didn't, didn't have a lady's face on it. And <clears throat> he says, okay, you're going to play the first two strings. Doom, doom, doom. Uh, you think you can do that, Robert? I said, yeah, I, I can do that. So he says, don't stop. Just keep on playing those two strings. And then he led the class while I'm doing doom, doom, doom. The class started singing with me, Farah Jaka. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just happy as all yeah, get out sense. playing these two strings. Doom, doom, the Farah Jaka. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing doom, 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 doom. And I just, I just lost it. Oh. Right then, the first day, and, and from that day on, I was like, I was hooked. I thought, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. I didn't have any, any, uh, any inkling as to what my, my path would be, mm -hmm. but I just knew that I loved it, and it felt so familiar. Mm -hmm. yeah. They make different size mm -hmm. bases. They make half size bases. They make three quarter. They make seven eighths. They make full size. So the base that I was had to tackle in grade school was a smaller okay. was a smaller okay. instrument. Okay. But I remember fast forwarding up to my my first year in, in high school of music and art in Manhattan in Harlem, 
that there was a girl who now is one of America's revered bow makers for mm -hmm. double bass. Her name is Sue Lipkins. And she was a little bitty five foot nothing girl, and I never heard anybody play the acoustic bass mm -hmm. like her. Mm -hmm. So I and I and she had tiny little hands, but she had the heart and, and I guess that's really all you need. What would you say to someone who is they have great aspirations to be in the yeah. but they're in Des Moines, Iowa, yeah. just Topeka, Kansas, yeah. which probably have some musicians mm -hmm. there, but not the intense crush of musicians that you just have a, this, this vast number of, of musicians that you can grow and feed off of and that can push you. Sure. What would be your advice okay. for such students? I remember in my travels from my early 20s, being in different parts of America and being in different parts of the world mm -hmm. and once in a while meeting these monster players from a little town and and I was asking I was asking them and myself like okay I'm from New York I grew up uh, you know in an aquarium of sea of of styles and gospel and and salsa and 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 rock and jazz straight ahead the village and all that and I would ask these people, like, dude, man, where did you get that? And, and they really didn't know, too, whether it was, it could have been from their parents. It could have just been them seeking it out with mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. But I will say now, in, in, 20, uh, in 2016, and with the advent of the Internet, my advice to, to aspiring musicians would be just to, like, listen and f even, like, force yourself to listen to different styles. Expose yourself. Yes, and mm -hmm. even, and, and just like with, with, with different styles of music and even different ex uh, musical experiences that I've, I've had uh, in, my, um, in my career, w whether they be good or bad, you just kind of put them in your bag of musical past mm -hmm. and, and you can borrow and you can learn. So with the, with the advent of the internet, um, and, and social media where you can you could definitely seek out and listen to different styles mm -hmm. I think that's very important we are so excited about having you here today but there's so much I want to ask you okay about your career and what you're doing mm -hmm. you have an album boom 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 I do and I do. I've been listening to that that was 2014 yes okay but you're working on another one now. I sure am do yeah. you have a title for that yet not yet I'm I'm still thinking of titles of songs and I'm not really sure I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe bending corners for a title of the record bending corner or continuum I'm not really sure something kind of provocative something that will make people think and wonder now yeah. my take on your first album it was kind of a mix of jazz and there's some reggae thrown in there I heard some tango stuff yeah. in there I heard some great accordion stuff I love mm. the accordion is the, your second album, is that going to be similar? It's going to be similar. Okay. Yeah, it's going to Good be mix. similar. I, I, want, I want the listener to go uh, on a journey with, with every song. Okay. So um, I want it to be eclectic, and I, and I want it to be uh, you know, provocative and, and, and make people think. And, and, and so they can, they can listen to it in their car. Mm -hmm. They can listen to it with their sweetheart mm -hmm. on the couch, with the, you know, uh, on the fire. Um, so yeah, it'll be it'll be a nice mix. I, I want it to be a mix because I feel okay. like me. I'm I'm a I'm a big mix, okay. big mess. <laughs> Roberto Valley has performed and recorded with folks like Spiral Gyro, uh, Diane Shore. Uh, name a couple of the other ones. Well, um, Jeffrey Osborne, yes. George Benson, yeah. Michael Franks. He's done it with a lot of prominent musicians, and he's a prominent in demand basis of his own right. We're just so pleased to have him here at Delaware State University. Thank you so Thank much, you, Joe, for coming to yeah. Delaware State University. I got a lot Shannon. more to say, so if uh, we can hook it up, let's Okay, do it. let's see. Let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. In the meanwhile, thank you for joining us for this segment, a special segment of DSU Inside Perspective. Y'all have a good day. And, oh, by the way, you might want to listen to this cut off of... Uh, uh, but boom, 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 Roberto Valley's album. This cut is called Latin. <laughs>